So another thing just to make sure we understand is the imagery that's on the ceiling in the day chapel where we have perpetual adoration of the Blessed Sacrament from Monday through Friday. So the background of this comes from Revelation chapter 5. So again, Revelation is a book which in many ways is just a liturgical book. It's describing for us, in other words, the worship that takes place in heaven. So Revelation 5 starts this way. It says, I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. What's this scroll? This is history. And it's sealed. What's this say? It's a, it's a way of saying, uh, kind of symbolically, history, history has a meaning which has been locked for us. There's the, the, in other words, like the, the history of the world is stuck. It's waiting for someone to set it free. That's what seals with seven, sevens being a no, number of totality, means. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who's worthy? to open the scroll and break its seals. In other words, who can possibly set history free from its captivity to death and to sin, which has riddled our race ever since the fall? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I wept much that no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And then one of the elders said to me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, that these are biblical Old Testament images of the Messiah, he has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. In other words, one of the elders is saying to John, don't worry, there is somebody who's done something that's set history free from its captivity to sin and death. So he says, I see a, or he's told about a lion who's conquered. And then it says, between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, he doesn't see a lion, he sees a lamb standing as though it had been slain. That's the image which is on the ceiling of our chapel. The lamb standing, in other words, um, it's triumphant, it's alive, but as though it had been slain. How, how are we to understand this? This is a, a way of describing that Jesus in heaven still has his wounds. He boasts of his wounds that he endured in his passion, the scourging, the crowning with thorns, the nailing in his hands and feet, the, the piercing of his side. So the lamb, as though it had been slain, it was once dead, but it's standing, it's alive, for now and forever. And he's the one who has set history free from its having been captured by the enemy back at the beginning of our race when we fell prey to his deceptions and rebelled against God. At that moment, we unwillingly and unknowingly sold ourselves into slavery to powers that we can't compete against. The powers are death and sin. Jesus, by his death and his resurrection, has triumphed over the powers of sin and over the power of death, and he has defeated the enemy, that is to say the devil. And because of that, you and I can give thanks to God and we can live our lives with confident hope that even though death will claim us one day, as it will claim everybody, it cannot hold someone who has been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. That's why that's on the ceiling in the day chapel.